It's so hard, but you got to learn how to love yourself. You got to learn how to accept yourself. You got to learn that your past does not define you. Um, that today defines you. What you do today. And it's so easy for people that are struggling with depression to get caught up in the past and dwell in the past. You know, and that's what keeps them in the cycle. It's so hard to break out of that cycle um, that they forget about the day that they're actually in. I feel great. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Going on a couple hours of sleep, but this I'm is, good. This is the fun part, huh? <laughs> right? There might be some crying at some point. Later. Yeah, I was. Yep, yep, exactly. I'm gonna uh, lube up some private parts here. All right, I will. Uh, I'll leave that out. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. 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 The times. Company is good, company is good. Make sure you hydrate, all right? It's 368 miles. <laughs> <laughs> Hydration's kind of important. Exactly. <laughs> yes, sir. I think it's a little marathon race. Um, I'm actually uh, doing a, I actually have your symbol on the car. I'm doing a, 368 miles up and down Monroe County to thank you guys and first responders oh, cool. here in the Keys and local businesses. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. you the Keys 100 or? I'm going to do part of the Keys 100 course. I'm going to run here to Marathon. Uh, I'll run 15 hours a day. All right. All right. Three, Here's the man. Two, one, and they're off. Woo! This is crazy, this is <laughs> happening, man. We've been talking about this for like the last couple of years. 368 miles. Um, wow. Uh, th this all started actually probably about what, four, four and a half years ago. Um, right after I actually ran the Keys 100. Um, I always wanted to do something pretty big and um, 368 miles is actually approximate distance to an area in Orlando, um, to where I sat there and uh, traveled from me and some other people. Um, I'd have to go back to the very beginning to explain the reason why, is that at one point in my life I was actually homeless and we had a camp out, out in Orlando. And in Orlando it gets pretty cold um, and it gets pretty rough out there, um, especially off of Orange Blossom Trail, an area where there's a lot of drug and gang activity and stuff like that. Um, so a group of us decided that we'd make the trip down to the Keys. And we'd head straight from Orlando, straight across to the water, and just head all the way south and follow the, and sleep off the waterway. What we thought would be waterway all the way down um, didn't end up turning that way. Anyways, it was approximate distance of uh, 368 miles that I did on Map, MapQuest. And uh, 
it's always uh, every time that Rita and I would sit there and travel up north and all that. It's always been a crutch on me of bringing up bad memories and stuff like that, and uh, just a reminder. And so, I just told her I wanted to turn something negative into something positive. So I don't have that stomach, that feeling in my stomach every time I come up to Orlando. Um, and so that's how I came up with uh, um, running 368 miles. And then uh, COVID and all that hit, and um, we had to change things up. And after I talked with you a few times, I just decided, why not? Monroe County, it, basically the keys is where I found myself, and I picked myself back up. Um, so why not just do the whole 368 miles here and finish up here? Okay, what were you saying, David? <laughs> <laughs> My very first, uh, the 100, or actually the first ultra marathon, I did the keys 100. I'm not kidding you, by the time I got to Key West, or not even Key West, right before in Stock Island right there by the Air Force Base, I broke down in tears, man, because I realized the sun was coming up again, and I had to go through that damn heat for another eight more hours. <laughs> I told Reed, I'm like, I can't do this. You haven't done the Keys 100 yet? No, just oh, a 50. That was my first 50 miler. It's, uh, I love it. And it was very hot it's, that day. I love, I love this race, especially at night, once you get into nighttime, late, the overnight time hours. This is a Keys 100 uh, training exercise. Yeah, exactly. I was just telling him we're running the Keys 100 course. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you things though, so you have, you don't need to. Got David. So make sure you know got uh, Chuck assist on the assist. Rita. Rita. And we're pitch black again. <laughs> it started off as a pipe dream, probably about four and a half. Say four and a half, five years ago. Um, it was right after the Keys 100. Um, I actually went from 5K to key, Keys 100. Um, never, I used to always hate running and stuff like that. And um, I got inspired to do alter, alter uh, marathons because of, uh, I read an article that somebody wrote about her mother having cancer and um, she ran the Keys 100. And um, it helped get her, get her through that and um, she was able to do something huge. And at that time period, I had some friends that were had cancer, and that was my biggest goal. I'm like, you know what? I can sit there and raise money, and why not go big or go home? Side of the road with the down taken. It's all good. These are uh, these are the moments, man. You already gave, you gave it to Lindsay? Orange or strawberry? I already gave it to Orange or strawberry and lemon. Orange. 
How's crew chief doing? Well, you know me, I'm, I'm a rock star extraordinaire. I got this. All right, nice. Except when it comes to opening the scratch bag. It's a spot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's good bacon, too. Mm -hmm. I just, I, it became like an obsession. It was just like, I gotta do this somehow. How can I do this? And then all of a sudden I started playing in my head, planning it and doing, coming up with stupid ideas during the time period. I'm like, well, maybe I can do this and this and that. And I hadn't shared it with anybody. I was just thinking it's in my head because I was new to the sport. And I'm like, nobody's gonna sit there and they're gonna think I'm an idiot or crazy or what have you. So I just kept it to myself for the longest time. And, um, and as time went on and as I started evolving and learning a little bit more and more in the, the ultra running world, the more and more obsessed I became with it. And I'm like, I, could, I want to try and make this a reality, whether I sit there and walk the whole thing or whether it takes me a month to do, um, I need, there's something I needed it to do. I am uh, just past Ann's Beach. Well, the sun is finally out to play. Yes, sure is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you're, you're getting spoiled there for a minute, man. I, I was. We don't want this to be easy on you. I see some suffering, <laughs> some pain. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. some mileage in all this morning before everything went bad. Yes, like I was saying, my hand, I woke up with my hand cramping up and uh, decided I'd wait a few hours before I got back out running and uh, start drinking some Gatorade just to get some electrolytes and all that good stuff. I had a banana. Uh, my stomach seemed to be doing fine then. And like I said, uh, after about seven miles out, out on the started creeping in and then I kept pushing forward and then 
was a knot, it was like a pain. Uh, I was actually curled up on a, a bench. So I waited about 15, 20 minutes to see if it passed. I started walking. And it got to the point uh, where I got a few more miles in. And then at that point, I called Rita. I'm like, listen, I was like, I need to get something solid, some noodles or something in my stomach, and uh, rest and let my body calm down and we'll, we'll see if I can push through it. So, yeah. Eight, Two hours later, I felt like a brand new person. So I'm assuming it was because of lack of sleep. I think sleep is like the number one, man. And uh, was literally, I woke up, I woke up on my own, ate uh, two things of Raymond noodles, and I was ready to go. I felt nice. great. Yeah, but surprise, my legs feel great. Um, the blister, we popped it, no issues with that. Nice. So, See what tomorrow brings. I yeah, man, just yesterday, keep nausea, jogging today. along. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, hopefully, you know, once uh, once you get into like a rhythm with uh, these like stacked up days, I think, I think things will settle into place. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I'm hoping. And then now Reed and I are getting somewhat in a, a rhythm. I know she is. Uh, and my concern is her getting a lot of sleep too. Right. No, for sure. Um, so I told her we'll end it early, around eight-ish tonight. All right. Feel like a, feel like a movie star. You are, man. <laughs> you are the movie star. Hey, I told that up wrong. I'm, I'm about to hit 29 now. Okay, no worries. My math is off from this morning. I hate this. This is the part I hate. All right, just be safe. We'll see you on the other side. None of it turned out the way it was planned. Um, I talking with my wife, talking with Rita and all that, we were sitting there and uh, mapping it out. And uh, there was actually a time period where I got discouraged about it. I didn't know I was gonna be able to do it, but Rita was always motivating and supportive of it. Um, she would sit there and help me plan out the logistics. Um, Cause it got to a point to where I was getting overwhelmed. And especially during that time period, it was with COVID and all that. Um, it got to a point to where I was unmotivated and I didn't, I actually considered uh, pushing it off for another year. Um, but then, like I said, uh, Rita kept motivating me and we sat there and literally laid out a game plan. Um, How's the A team doing? <laughs> Woo! I feel, I'm feeling even as pumped as ever because I'm just loving that he's running so well and just, just like cranking out the miles. Well, I'm Rita. Rita Castro, and I'm known as the crew chief extraordinaire. I've been with David for nine years. We've been married for eight, and being part of this ultra family and learning the adventure of ultra running is, is pretty profound and uh, crazy awesome. The game plan was to sit there and do uh, the key, Keys 100 course back and forth three and a half times, and then I'd sit there on the last 60s, uh, eight miles, I'd start off from here and then head down south. Everything actually went day to day, um, just because we didn't factor in all the construction in different areas. Um, we didn't factor in how hot it would be. Um, and honestly, we had no idea on how exhausted we'd be, we'd be, we would be. My poor wife at the beginning was sitting there crewing and trying to keep me upbeat and trying to keep uh, motivated that uh, after the third day, you start forgetting stuff. I mean, we were forgetting nutrition and um, just because of exhaustion and everything. So we just, we decided not to sit there and go by what we had scripted and just played it day by day. Do you feel like your ankles okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like one of those, it scared me at first, but it was...
got there. Mountain Dew. All right. All right. The drink okay. of champions. I think that's your that's the only time I ever drink it is run it. That's your first Mountain Dew. I never get to see this because I'm always out here during the dark time. That's true. This is cool, like uh, getting to run the different sections at different times yeah. definitely gives you a new perspective. Good time. on a mission. So I'd rather get as much as I can instead of the late night out. Yeah, man, crank it out. Yep. Just don't crank it too long. Make sure you get a good night's yeah, sleep. We've oh. we reached 7 o'clock, that's it. Yeah. We're going to go see if we can pass that through. All right, cool, man. All right, well. On the downside, it took me uh, almost nine hours to run a freaking 50K. The upside, I feel strong like I just started out, so. Awesome! Yeah. This is what it's all about, man. You're, forever 50K, you're dipping into some new uh, some new territory with these multi-day. Yeah, I'm learning so much. Yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah, he's feeling he's feeling it. So how are you feeling? I'm doing great. I got a are, are you are you taking care of yourself? I got a little extra sleep myself this morning. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie because I actually was needing it too. So not for the same reason he did, but I definitely uh, took advantage of a few extra hours myself. So I'm 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 doing good, real good actually. Weather so, is gorgeous right now. Oh my gosh! Right? The, the breeze, the oh, skies. Like all day. Wow. We're 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 this. Where else do you want to be right now? Absolutely. What do you think, Zaley? Huh? What do you think? It's <laughs> nice here? Yeah. All right. You a little tired? No. How about you? Um, tired? My feet are... chasing so David? Yeah, my feet are a little bit sore. I literally put a napkin in the back of my shoe so it wouldn't rub on my shoe. And it isn't working very well. Well, those aren't running shoes. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to run so much. I'll be prepared for next time. All right, there you have it. All right, here we are. It's day, uh, day four, right? <laughs> day four. Day four it is. All right. I'm going to wake up here. Where are you going today? Um, I'm actually going to stay here in Marathon because I need to get some rest. So I'm going to do a bunch of back and forth to uh, Sombrero Beach and then a few back and forth to uh, the Cinema Bridge. This day is like a picture day. We're the police station get pictures in the fire department. So you were telling me uh, David has inspired you? He has, he has. <laughs> and your name, sir? Hosian. All right. Hosian. I started doing two, three miles. I'm up to six. I'm pushing, the next one's gonna be 10. Wow. And little by little. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw him and he got me fired up yesterday. I'm like, yes. Nice. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. That's what it's all about. So I'm, at my, I'm a walker, I'm not a runner. That's okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go. Woo. Yeah, sick pop. Really? Yeah, they told me about it. It's all homemade, and I'm like, how good can popsicles really be? <laughs> Seriously. Sure, I mean, and that's I, awesome oh, to oh, know that, because. Uh, oh, that's your, and she brought them home, and I'm like, oh. The kids good. love popsicles, man. <laughs> yeah, so we uh we forgot a bunch of our nutrition here at a home in Marathon, just 
because of lack of sleep and all that. But uh, we are so happy to stumble upon a Burger King, so I had Rita go and get me, honestly, two regular uh, hamburgers, but she came back with two Whoppers. As soon as I took the first bite, I just told her, I'm like, this is the best tasting Whopper I've ever had. This is like the great bottom of my hamburgers right now. Nice. But I tore that bad boy up. There you go. Burger King uh, became gourmet. <laughs> Gourmet burgers. Oh yeah, and I haven't had a Burger King probably in about five years. That's funny. Nice. Well, it's the little things that matter, right? Exactly, especially <laughs> when you're at that distance and that amount of hours out there. Yeah. Take the good when you can. You, uh, you, you appreciate things a little bit differently. Oh, by far, by far, by far. So how, how long were you homeless for? Uh, a little over, I don't know, for about three and a half years, because during the whole cycle I wasn't homeless. When I was in the Keys and all that, I actually uh, found a construction job where I got paid under the table and stuff like that, and I had a home. And then once that job went away, um, obviously no income coming in. Um, so yeah, I don't know, for probably about three and a, a total of three and a half years. This, uh, all this area right here used to be all grass. There's some trees all over the place. All over. There's a picnic table right over here, but when I started getting serious about getting uh, back on my feet, I got out of the woods um, just because it gets dangerous in there. I mean, literally, it's like you're in jail. You really have to sleep with one eye open because people will steal, jump you and steal your stuff, whatever you have. Um, but I chose this spot right here because if you look directly behind there, there's a jail. Literally right behind there, this tree right here, is the jailhouse. So with cops coming in here in and out, I'm like, they're Nobody's gonna really mess with you over here, and plus, I was out of sight, out of mind. Um, it got to the point with me that the police officers here in Morrell County realized that I wasn't a drunk or a druggie, um, so they'd always tell me, David, out of sight, out of mind. Um, normally, anybody else, they're out here that they trespass them, because um, a lot of them are drinking and uh, either on uh, painkillers, because painkillers are a huge thing in here in the Keys. Um, so you were I, just staying out here, camping out? In I the... have a little, a little one-man tent, and like I said, there's more trees here to where you couldn't see me off the road, and you couldn't see me right behind here. And I'd be right about in here, um, I'd set up my little one-man tent, and that's where I'd crash. Um, when wow. you're homeless, you carry only the basic necessities. I had a backpack with a couple change of clothes. Um, I had one traveling outfit, one halfway jeans. Um, and then I had, uh, at that point in time, I had dress pants, shirt and a tie and all that. So when I would go out looking for jobs. So we're like right off of Overseas Highway. Grown out. So you used to stay out here? Yeah, keep going all the way back and uh, there would be a few of us that had a camp back here. Um, you can see a lot of, you go back in there and see all the beer bottles and stuff like that. Wow. Um, knowing Christmas was coming up and I was going to be alone and um, I actually started talking to, I actually started talking to God and just asking him for forgiveness for all the stupid stuff I've done and how to let go of all the stuff from my past and I literally just sat there and talked about everything that happened in my childhood to, uh, to, the, to the man upstairs. And I ended up crying to myself to sleep. Like I said, at that point in time, people don't care. I mean, they'll beat you to a pulp and just leave you dead. But yeah, this is where I, uh, back in there. I'm not kidding you, the very next day I woke up, I actually just felt so, I felt like a ton of bricks was lifted off my shoulder, um, but I felt, I actually had a positive outlook. I woke up that morning, I'm like, I'm going to find a job and whatever else. Basically, the keys is where I found myself and I picked myself back up, um, so why not just do the whole 368 miles here and finish up here. And, um, just bring awareness to uh, the uh, mental illness, um, bring awareness to the sheriff's office. Um, and one of the reasons why I ran for the sheriff's office is because uh, during my time of being homeless, 
they were always supportive of me. There was times when they sat there and could have thrown me in jail for trespassing, sleeping where I shouldn't have been sleeping, um, stuff like that. But they were always encouraging. I mean, they gave me the tough love, like, you know, what the hell is wrong with you? Get off your ass, yada, 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 you're young. And there's a few of them in particular that, uh, that I remember to this day. Uh, that always stuck, they were always there for me. I mean, they always encouraged me, whatever else, asked how I was doing, are you okay? Luckily, the cops were always there and uh, supported me. Um, but that's basically why I ran uh, 368 miles, just to bring awareness and give thanks to the community of where I found myself and uh, give thanks to the, the sheriff's office. I'm not a rich man monetarily wise, and so I figured this would be the best way to sit there and give back to the community um, that I love. I told her, I'm like, you need to stay in bed, I got this. All I gotta just get move up, put my water bottles, I can do that on my own. And of course, she's running around trying to get stuff with me all morning. I'm like, I'm gonna go out and do an out and back, stay in bed, and rest. Because I need you 100% when I'm not. Right. And here she is now. Well. I know she's being concerned, but I'm concerned about her. She's giving you her all. And it stresses me out. I don't want her to be sick. But who are you? Who are you talking about? The extraordinaire. The extraordinaire. Who's the extraordinaire? Weeda. Oh, so you think she's taking care of too many people? Yes. And she needs to rest. Mm-hmm. So who's gonna help her? You. Me. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been doing a lot of crewing, as y'all know, from the hundreds that he's already ran. Um, and I've done him solo and I'm done, I've crewed him solo and I've also crewed him with other people. This was really a united effort from, from him and myself and those that came down. Um, and, and it was just different because each day was, you know, I've never done multi-day crewing except for the 100 milers. And so it really was a unique experience that I embraced because I wanted to learn more about how to do this multi-day event because I know that's something he wants to do for 2021. And so, you know, it, it, we were in sync. That's one thing that I can tell you as far as Dave and I, we are in sync when it comes to me crewing him and, and knowing what he needs. I can see by his face, by his form when he's running. Um, and then, of course, others that were here to help support could give me a heads up uh, ahead of time so I could be prepared and, um, you know, just had to meet the challenges that, the challenges as they happened. Honestly, when things uh, started getting, especially when it started getting close, is the support from the community. I was actually blown away. Um, I kept telling Rita, um, and during those difficult times of training periods, um, especially with COVID, it was like one of those things where... Uh, I had no choice but to kick ass because there's so many people that were coming and supporting me with this. With you guys coming down, uh, you guys doing this video, um, Lisa coming down, and a bunch of other people that kept, you know, they were trying to make arrangements to come down just to run some mileage with me that it, it, it literally often, many times, it brought me to tears. Because um, honestly, I expected this is a pipe dream. This is something that I, w I wanted to do for myself, and I just... In all regards, I just play, I thought it was just going to be out, honestly me out there running 368 miles and however long it took me, Rita and I just getting it done. And then after that, I think that's, even now thinking about it, I'm still, I'm not even, I'm not even blown away that we just did 368 miles, it's 368 miles. I'm more blown away about the fact of how many people sat there and were so supportive of it. Um, I think uh, uh, with my past and my upbringing, I'm not used to that. So it really, really caught me off guard, and it, it uh, actually humbled me. And uh, and like I told you, it, um, it brought Rita and I to tears several times because um, we were just overwhelmed. I mean, it's been brutal. Oh, God. A few occasions I've gotten the goosebumps, which is like, uh. she was everybody's daughter, but she never lost a hand.
I think honestly that's one thing 20 30 years from now I think honestly that's going to be the main thing that's going to stick out to me is just the support and everybody that came in and uh, um, helped Reader and I accomplish my personal goal this isn't like something that um, there's no there was no gratification for other people to get anything out of it in my opinion and for people to sit there and take time out of their schedule especially during this fucked up COVID um, just to come down and help me finish up pipe dream meant more to me than complaining the 368 miles. I was going to say I should hide over there and scare him, but maybe not because I'll probably get ninja kicked. <laughs> <laughs> right? Especially after the conversation. Especially after yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had this on backwards. I was going to hide behind that house and scare you. And I'm like, I don't know, man. After yesterday, I might get ninja kicked in the face. <laughs> yeah, that would, he, he, that would happen in, in less than a second. All right. What's going on? Morning. Okay. Morning. We'll probably underneath the house. We'll What's going on, What's man? man? All right. Things are getting serious. Yeah. It's yep, a real yeah, deal. Very. Boy, the headband came out, man. You know, you know it's getting serious. Huh? aside because this was definitely uncharted territory as Dave's already said and so it just became perseverance and survival and, and getting it done and whatever needed to be done I got it done and with the help of all of those that came to support um, 
it, it was a learning experience every single day was a new day a unique day and the challenges that came we we got through them and uh mental emotional psychologically physically it, it was it was it was unbelievably amazing i mean i I can't even say the, the words to explain what that experience was like. Had you ever had previous experience in doing, I, I know, you, you know you've, you've run many ultras, but have you done any like multi-day ultras like back to back, uh, you know, or, or uh, were you doing significant amount of mileage in consecutive days? Uh, no, never, never. Although I gotta say when I ran my first Keys 100, that felt like a freaking multi-day event because it took me 32 hours to run. I would barely made it, the cutoff, like I made it within one minute of the cutoff time. But no, I've never ever, uh, I think the most, mi like I said, the most mileage I think I did was 118, 119 miles over at Skydive where I uh, DNF'd the um, 150 miler. Um, that's the most amount, so this is uncharted territory, uh, but uh, Thankfully, I had you and I had a few other people that I sat there and reached out to to get some words of encouragement and advice on because I had no idea what to expect. And uh, like I said, Lisa helped me out dramatically because um, this is, I, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know. Thank you, man. We were saying maybe tonight like, yeah, we could just set it up in anywhere. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do that. Just so we can yep, have the moment. And we'll, we'll do all of them. Yep, we'll set that. them up. Okay. But, if no. we wait for the end, no. it's no, not going to work. No, it'll be too much because we're all going to be... And we're going to be focused on the yeah. finish anyway, and it's going to be daytime. No, that's it's a not better idea. The impact. That'll be a better idea. That'll so, be a better... I'll get my phone off, too. So I didn't know if there's, like, a specific like a little bridge or if we should just do it close to home, maybe, on one of the outbacks. He's, like, coming back in home, and then he yeah. sees... Maybe that yeah. would be ideal. Yeah, like, he sees be, him, yeah. like, lighting the way yeah, back yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That'd be kind of cute, like, meaningful. I think meaningful. that's... Yes, yes. And it also... It's, a safer way of us setting it up and yeah. knowing they're not going to get messed yeah. up. Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. That's a little I can set idea. it up. He's, yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you looking for? No, nothing. I'm getting some for Zaylight. Okay. Uh, okay let me How you feeling, man? Phone. I feel good besides for my feet. They're pulsating right now. You want me to put a little ice on them? No, I'm just going to get them up for okay, a little while and then I'll go, okay. we'll do an out and back yeah, again. Yeah, and tell, Were you expecting you this to be easy? Never. All right, man. <laughs> You're almost there. <laughs> Never. I'm just trying to survive the afternoon. Once that I can survive the afternoon, I'm trying to keep a anywhere from a 15 to 16 minute pace. If I can do that all afternoon, I'll be happy. And then tonight I can drop back down to 14 to 15. Is that one okay? Yeah, that's right. Okay. By the slime. All, <laughs> she, all she Gatorade the in this one again? Just all straight Gatorade? Or all straight Gatorade, okay. yeah. I've got a towel if we want to do the... Uh, Alright, the one thing I need though is for you to make sure you get some rest because... I'm going to after this. I'm starting to get heartburn. Okay. Oh, here's the... Here's clean, brand new socks. That's a brand new pair. That's probably a good thing. These are my old shoes? These are the good new good. ones. All right, perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Tom, I don't think oh. I have any of those. No, right. no we don't. Okay. But, don't but I don't need to write this no, back no, in. No, no, when I, I mean... go get any ice. But don't forget, I'm going to do, you know, you've got watermelon later, because I think that'll be a good refreshing, if you feel like it. Right. Watermelon, all that's going to be here. perfect. No, you Trust me later on. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you guys can do your ninja tricks down to the beach, because that's where we're going to be heading. So that, sombrero? Sombrero. We're going to do an outing back right, to cool. there. Cool. So we can go to Sombrero Beach. Okay. Yes, so the kids can sit there and see the beach and all that over there. Yeah, that's a nice beach. Yeah. And there's the play area and nobody's over there, so. Yeah, man. No, th those are amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I love their popsicles now. I'm addicted to them. <laughs> I told uh, Michael, I'm like, you gotta try these popsicles. It's not free right here. You gotta try these. These aren't your typical public popsicles right going on right there. He loves key lime pie, so we gave him one of those. Just couldn't believe it. Right. Like, so how you feeling? 
Um, good. I'm starting to perk up with my core. Just going through that bowl period. You know how you get. Right. Other than that, good. Nice. Riding it while I can. While yeah, it man. Keeps going. There's not much more to ride, man. Just you're there. Yeah. Keep keep pushing. We're getting there. Home stretch. Slowly but surely. Watch the potholes. Yeah. All right, man. Catch you in a bit. All right, brother. Jurassic Park going on over here. Yeah. All these iguanas. So you're, uh, what'd you end up doing there? 32 and a half. Okay, nice. Yeah. So 67 and a half to go. Yeah. All right, so we're past 300, brother. Oh, we are, aren't we? Past 300, let's get this. Let's get do my, it. Get my feet up in the air real quick. Let's crank these miles, man. There's a spot right there I can show you. Do you want to get your stuff down and then I'll show you where I've been parking? Lucas, what are you doing? I know. The mosquitoes suck. Okay, good boy. <laughs> Let me it hurts. Hurts. I don't want you to get it. Bottle's a little sticky. You want me to hold that? Let's just wait. Get no, I'm just going to get my ankles. Oh. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so, uh, so you guys are going to do about the same thing.
is challenging. I mean, as a kid growing up and learning basic uh, social skills and learning life, I was learning how to survive and just uh, um, <clears throat> I was a I, I became a, a parent at about nine, ten years old, taking care of my little brother, um, just because my uh, father was messed up on heroin and drugs, and so <clears throat> my my childhood was never normal. Um, and thankfully, my aunt and uncle uh, they adopted my uh, little brother and I and uh, took us in. But I think at that point in time, the damage was already done with me mentally and wise. Um, that I could never trust anybody, <clears throat> and I was always, uh, I always lived in fear, and, um, I just, I couldn't get close to anybody. The only person I was close to was my little brother, because I took care of him. I, at that young age, I sat there and fed him, bathed him, and all that. I learned how to take care of him, and then, uh, our whole world opened up when, uh, my aunt and uncle adopted us, uh, just because they were so loving and caring that it was new to me, and it scared it scared the crap out of me. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to receive it. With my past and all that, and I felt this was important for me to do. And I guess really three years ago, I, I sat there and had planned on doing it the following year, um, but life happened. Everything started happening. Um, we were going through issues, health issues. Um, I had to have surgery on my jaw, and um, so that ended up getting postponed. And um, it was up until la I think it was last year when I sat there and reached out to you. I'm like, I need to, I need to make this happen. Um, it's either now or never because I keep, I, at that point, I was kept pushing it off. And then, um, then COVID happened, and uh, it just honestly, with the COVID situation, it felt like the exact right time for me to do it. When, when all else fails. I'm not crewing. I am. I am making a movie. Oh. It's a movie out here. I ain't crewing. I'm making a movie. I'm making a movie. Coach, how's he doing? He's doing incredible. Amazing. I'm so proud of him. It's gonna make me cry. So I don't. Can't talk. I can't. Actually, I we'd, can't we'd cry. love to see some tears <laughs> right now. Stop it. <laughs> He's doing amazing. I mean. He's moving really well, and considering he's been out here for seven seven days now, right? What time yeah. is it? Yeah, actually, I mean, in about one hour, it'll be he's, officially he's, seven days. I mean, I mean, he's moving incredible. He's he's not listen. He's straight up. I mean, he's super strong. Um, he's moving efficiently and and quickly. I mean. It's amazing, and it's hot. I have to, I have to tell you all that I am soaking wet in sweat. Like it's been extremely it doesn't, hot. It doesn't. It doesn't matter humor. that it's you know there's no sun or whatever. No, I mean, it's, it's hot. It's been it's really stupid. hot in here, and it's like suffocating hot. Yeah. And he's been out in this for seven days with no blisters. Yeah, that takes a toll on your. I mean, it's body. unbelievable. No, no major issues, really. Yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable. No, I'm at that pace where nothing's tasting nothing good okay. and I'm not hungry. Okay, alright. Well, I've got mashed potatoes and mac later, but let's we'll do it. Is there a durlet anti fatigue in here? Uh, yes, there is. We're gonna at least one half, maybe two. Alright, I'm gonna take one now. You have to do it. Gotta make sure we keep the ice. Really important right now. Keep it cool. Yeah, I'm up. 
dump some cold water on my head just to get refreshed yeah. already. Somebody needs a Since it's, the you, sun's gone. Yeah, if you need more than no. this, you can have it. No, I don't need more. I just need a little bit. I would, okay. I was such a happy camper, I screamed for joy when the sun was gone. Oh, I know. It's gonna. We've had nothing, nothing but sun. Here. There you go, man. You got this. You want to keep moving as you keep feeling better? Instead of... Part of we were doing my out. Yeah. Oh, bad. Don't want you to feel worse. A little bit. You need a little bit more watermelon because that tastes pretty good. Pretty All right, good. good. That's See? This is <clears> how <throat> we figure it out. But it feels good. <clears throat> Who doesn't think this is fun? How come... <laughs> no, like, you know? What else would you be doing at 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. <laughs> Absolutely. Who needs to sleep? I mean, she's overrated. Yeah. I certainly don't. <laughs> I was just going to say, no, you don't. from my house to the bridge, so. I guess whatever halfway point I need to keep track. We gotta be a, we gotta so be. So from here, from here, from my home, to the bridge is exactly a mile. You know that bridge where you thought it was, there's, the, the, where there's, there's a person there? Person. Scary person, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like a scary person I'm though, I saw I'm telling you, it, it looks like a pretty scary person. <laughs> Watch, we get it on film. Lewis gets it on film, and then when he replays it, there's actually gonna be a scary person there. When we get up here and we turn right and I'm gonna, see Tommy, I'm gonna capture the scary person. You need to <laughs> capture the scary person because I think it's like it's a right, the ghost of a some Keith kind Holland of yeah, or, some kind of like <laughs> evil zombie right? goblin. So for folks back home, when you guys hear about you know like hallucinations and stuff like that, <laughs> this is not what the people are talking about. No. Uh, it's not a scary person. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It is like a little person in a black robe. <laughs> prepared for this miracle Egg McMuffin. It is a miracle. Uh, <laughs> I'm down for some miracles right now. <laughs> the best miracle ever. Slight, slight, slight smile for the camera. There it is. All right, I'll take it. He's doing excellent, like I said. <laughs> he is. Oh, yeah. This is the, uh, the after effects of seven days of continual grinding. Then, uh, 109 mile final push. 27 and a half miles to go. Almost there. Their biggest fear that they've ever had or or that they've ever experienced, that feeling that you have in your stomach, in that pit when you're really scared or something, or you're just you just want to cry or you're angry. Um, that's how I felt like 24/7. There was no in between. I'd sit there and walk around with my stomach just nauseated in uh in just that pit of 
helplessness and loneliness and, uh, and just living in fear. Um, so after going through that for a long, long time and going through relationships after relationships just because I honestly did not know how to love and I didn't know how to receive love, um, I was more comfortable being alone. I mean, my wife loves me unconditionally. She's always been supportive of me no matter what. Even when I come up with stupid ideas like that, but to have random people that I don't really know that well and all that, and um, only know them for a short time period, to come and help support me, that just, it, 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 it uh, changed my view, my, honestly, my worldly view on uh, certain things. Realizing that, I'm not saying that I always thought the world was a shitty place, but it was that there is actually genuine people out there. It's so hard to realize that when you know, all the news and media and everything that's going on, especially nowadays, um, it just it just was incredible. It was incredible that people would sit there and sacrifice their time and everything else during the pandemic. Um, and it also taught me the type of person that I wanted to be. So. All right, so we're. We're on the like the actual home stretch. I, I think I may have said home stretch a few times, but <laughs> <laughs> David is uh, less than 12 miles. 88.63. There you have it. He's got 11.37 miles till he wraps up the 368 miles. He decided to go for a, a last 109 mile push in one shot after 259 miles in the tank. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible. He's definitely been feeling it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He's out here with uh, his coach, Lisa, AKA the Beast. <laughs> if you don't know, you better ask somebody. No, you better recognize. You better, you better go, go Google that shit. <laughs> Me. And you got Lulu and Rita. Lulu and yeah, Lulu. Are on their way to break. Lulu and Rita are on their way. Drink, drink, drink. We've been, yeah, we've been mixing it up. You know, doing some different uh, tactics here to keep uh, keep David on top of his game. Keep him in the shade. Keep him in the hot. shade. We're doing a really interesting, intricate course right now. Very technical. Uh, yeah. Super, very technical. super technical pavement trail right a here. Turns. A lot of turns. A lot of extra steps. But this is, helping, uh, this is helping David balance out all the kinks in the miles. body. <laughs> but uh, it's getting done. It's really nice in the shade. I'm now. seeing, some, I'm seeing a, a lot of smiling and laughing now. It's, yeah. it's nice. Call the shade victory dance right there. Yep, yep, that was some shade. Getting it done. Doing awesome, man. No, I'm, I'm okay. 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 Actually, I'll take that Tums, though. Here, you can... The meat? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was a life, life-changing event, I believe, for him and for me, but particularly for him to see his dream realized um, to be able to utilize this as, I call it, from trauma to triumph, because he utilized 368 miles to really dig deep to places that he has never gone, and me too, going along with him on the journey. So for me, it was uh, life-changing, heartwarming, phenomenal, outstanding, every adjective I could come up with beyond my wildest imagination. So David just passed Lisa and I and literally said, excuse me. <laughs> and it's flying away. <laughs> flying away. Man is over 360 miles. 
he's shit talking, trash talking us now. And he's he's riding high now. I think he's gonna coast, he's gonna slay these last six whatever miles and change he's got left. So cool. Got the proud coach right here. <laughs> How you, you feeling? Cry. I'm, like, we wanna see I, you cry I'm so a little incredibly, bit. I'm um, proud of him. He, he's worked so hard for, I mean, it's really a long time, like over a year to be able to get to this point where he felt confident enough to even try to do this. I mean, and he worked, even the days he didn't want to, just kept his head down, it worked so hard. And I mean, if you look yeah, at him. It's amazing, I mean, I, he's been talking to me about this dream for like over two yeah. years. It was something it that was so important. Finally come yeah. together and. It means a lot to him to be able to do this. This is something like, you said for two years he's talked to you about it and you know, he's, he's really planned and thought this through and it was something that he wanted to, to do and look at him he's just running off right now it's incredible like so proud of him well you did a phenomenal job coach <laughs> you deserve to him. be proud it's all him look at that Look at that. I He's running away from us. That's right. We're pretending that we're giving him some room, but we're we're exhausted. He's <laughs> running away. <laughs> All right, come on, guys. David's got about a half mile to go. Let's, let's go, let's go, let's go, team.
Cheers. I can't believe it's all. Cheers, brother. Cheers, brother. <laughs> Pizza. I'm gonna see if Horror Cane is open. No, uh, what about the other place in Colony? Yeah. I can see if they're open. I guarantee they're open. Okay, so let's try them. Yeah, take a nice swig of that thing, man. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, there we are, celebrating David's uh, 368. It's one heck of a journey. <laughs> about to uh, pop that Dom Perignon. Yeah. Out of my price league. That's out of my class league right there. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Hello. So we are at Sombrero Beach. This is the behind the scenes documentary of 368. We are filming David right now. Um, it's been quite the adventure. Yesterday, there was a little bit of a catastrophe that happened, but we, <laughs> we figured it out. All right, let's see if we can find David right now. Yep. All right. All right, man. Well, running Ninja Films. Here we go. All right. She always hated running too, and then now she she got into it. And now she can't stop. And now she's going to be running her first ultra at skydive, her first 50k. So it's funny how the sport grabs you.